Hey guys, hope everyone's doing well and staying safe out there. Today I just wanted to make a quick little tutorial video on how I go about recording, editing, and uploading my Beat Saber videos to YouTube. I've gotten a few questions from a few different people saying that they've tried to upload some gameplay footage and it didn't look quite as crisp as they wanted it on YouTube. So just a little introduction, I believe that the culprit in most people's cases is when they are trying to upload their YouTube video in 1080p, especially for fast paced video games like Beat Saber. And the reason I think that is because the bit rate that YouTube uses for 1080p videos is really too low for the type of content that we are uploading. So the way that we can fix this is what well, we need a higher bit rate. And how do we get a higher bit rate on YouTube? Well, what we can do is we can upscale the 1080p footage to 4K, which will basically make YouTube treat our, what was originally a 1080p video as a 4K video, meaning it gives it a higher bit rate for a video that's essentially still a 1080p video. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, the first thing I wanted to do is kind of just walk you through my OBS settings just to make sure that we have a baseline and we're all on the same page when it comes to OBS. Um, let me pull OBS over into the screen. We have the nice little infinity effect going on here. If I maximize it, ooh, it gets real big. Okay. Um, so I just wanted to walk through the settings a little bit that I use for OBS. Um, it's going to be a little weird because we're actually recording this video with OBS. So some of the settings are going to be grayed out. I'm not going to be able to mess with them, but that'll be okay, I think. So let's head over to the settings. And if we go to the output tab, we see our uh, streaming section and our recording section. Um, the recording section is what we're going to focus on. I use the indistinguishable quality, large file size recording quality, and I personally use the software encoder, but I'm sure if you have an NVIDIA GPU or an integrated encoder on your GPU, um, which I do as well, but I just use the software encoder because it works for me. You go ahead and pick the, the NVENC encoder or whatever the AMD equivalent is. I'm not sure if the AMD equivalent is uh, shipped with OBS, as in, it, I don't know if, it, if it'll be an option out of the box. You may have to download a plugin to use it or something, um, but just keep that in mind. But the most important thing is I use this indistinguishable quality, large file size recording quality option. There should be another, I think there's another option like uh, high quality medium file size and lossless quality ridiculously huge ginormous file size or whatever. I don't recommend using the ridiculously huge ginormous file size option because it really is ridiculously huge and the quality difference really isn't worth all of that extra space that it takes. Okay, so let's go over to the audio. I don't, I don't think I've changed anything here. Um, I use the 44.1 kilohertz sample rate, which is perfectly adequate. And the last tab I want to go through is the video tab. And this is a, this might be a little bit of a shock. If you watch any of my YouTube videos, it says in the bottom right corner, if you have a, a suitable display that the video is being displayed in 4K. And that's half true and it's half a lie. Um, I do record Beat Saber videos at 1080p. And the only reason that it says 4K is because before I upload it to YouTube, I upscale it to 4K just to take advantage of YouTube using a higher bit rate for 4K videos, as well as using the VP9 encoder on those 4K. And I think 1440p videos as well. Um, so anything above 1080p, you're going to have just better quality overall, just because they allocate a higher bit rate for your video. And the last thing I want on this page I wanted to mention is recording at 60 FPS. That's very important, especially for fast paced video games. If you ever see a movie which is shot at 24 frames per second and something really fast hap or something really fast happens on screen, it can look kind of choppy. It can look broken. The illusion of motion is broken. So if we record a high paced video game like Beat Saber at something like that cinematic 24 frames per second or 30 frames per second or something like that, that movement of your sabers and your head moving can look choppy and kind of uncomfortable for the viewer. And it just doesn't look very good. So I make sure that I leave um, the FPS at 60. All right, so that should be the end of my OBS settings. So hopefully you take some time setting those up and then you record this awesome song on Beat Saber and you have your video file right here that OBS spit out. So let's take a look at this real quick. 
So th I think this is me just playing Reason for Living in the 360 mode. Um, so this is what would have come straight out of OBS. I haven't touched this in any way in a video editor or anything like that. So that's the video file that we're going to work with. The next step is to open up a video editor. I'm going to use DaVinci Resolve just because that's the one that I always use. And uh, it's free and I've had pretty good success with it. And unfortunately it takes a few seconds to open. So, all right, so we are greeted with this opening dialogue here. Uh, I'm just going to click on Untitled Project just to create a new project. And I go straight to the Edit tab at the bottom. And then all I have to do is drag in my video clip to this media pool area over here on the left. And this dialog pops up the clips you have or you have selected have a different frame rate than the current project settings. Do you want to change the project settings? Yes, you do. I believe the default is set to like 30 FPS or 24 or something like that. It's not set to 60 for some reason. Um, so that just is, assures that we have a project that is set to um, edit and export in 60 FPS. Okay, so we have our awesome high score Beat Saber playthrough here. And all we have to do is drag this to the timeline now and finish editing it. It looks like I have a little bit of extra stuff at the beginning of the clip, all right? Just trim it down and then let's check the back. Here's the final screen and it looks like I clicked the OK button right there. So trim it down there and get rid of that. Okay, so now we have our nicely um, trimmed Beat Saber playthrough and we don't have to listen to the whole thing, but that's okay. Uh, the only thing that I do is I put a little fade out transition at the end just to make it nice and tidy. And if you're a keen observer of my YouTube videos, you see that I usually have my little Twitter handle at the bottom right of it. I'm not gonna do that here. This is just for educational purposes, so I won't even bother with that, but now that's basically all that we have to do. And you notice I didn't apply any type of sharpening effects or anything like that. It's just the raw footage in the video editor. Nothing fancy on top of that. Okay, so once we have this all set up, we go over to the deliver tab and then this is where the important stuff happens. So this is where we're going to name our song or our video. So this is reason or living and I'm typing with one hand that's okay and the format you you can pick either mp4 or quicktime both are pretty pretty good for YouTube I'll just go ahead and pick quicktime and I set the resolution to 3840 by 2160 here and this is what's going to make YouTube use that better bit rate and the better encoder for your video on YouTube and make sure the frame rate is set to 60 and I don't really know if this makes a difference, but I usually come down here and set this to 90,000 kilobits per second. And that's it, that's all I do. I don't do anything special, don't apply any effects or anything to the video. I just add it over to the render queue and click save. And that was just a test one that I had and we'll replace it and then I hit render. All right, so that's all I do. And this is going to render away um, if I remember correctly, this is going to spit out like a two gigabyte ish file. Um, I know some people have a slower upload speed. So maybe a file like this would take a long time to upload to YouTube. Uh, so there is an optional last step that you can do if you don't want to upload like a, a two gigabyte file or something like that. Um, you can run this file that's being rendered through a program called Handbrake. And what Handbrake does is it tries to reduce the file size of the video while maintaining as much quality as possible. So that'll reduce your video, you know, maybe even under a gigabyte in some cases. Now, I thought I would give a little intro on what the behind the scenes problem actually was. So I, I mentioned at the beginning of the video that the problem was with the YouTube 1080p bitrate. And maybe some people don't know what a bitrate is. It's essentially just a limit on the video that says you can use this many bits per second to store the video information. So let's take, for example, the um, the Twitch streaming bitrate. Um, I believe they 
say that you should stream to Twitch at 6,000 kilobits per second when you're streaming 1080p. So what is that? That's 750 kilobytes, which is like three quarters of a megabyte of data that you are sending per second. And if you're streaming at 60 FPS, you're trying to send essentially 60 images in less than a megabyte of space. So that's, that's the issue right there. It's a, a version of the issue, right? So if you're streaming to Twitch and you play one of those crazy wall Beat Saber maps, um, that have so much going on on the screen. Um, it just can't record all of the changes happening frame by frame of the video with that really limited 6,000 kilobit per second bit rate. Now, Tom Scott has a really awesome video about bit rate. And it looks like something happened on Windows behind the scenes, but that's okay. Um, and I will definitely link to that video in the description. It essentially goes and illustrates really nicely what I'm trying to say here and what I think the problem most people have with Beat Saber videos on YouTube is. And essentially, if you don't want to watch that video, it's when you have lots of moving parts, like in a Beat Saber video, you have your head moving left, right, rotating particle effects flying all around. And, you know, if you still have the the block debris turned on, the debris flying in all different directions. There's lots of changes happening frame by frame. You Beat Saber really isn't a still game in any sense of the word still. Um, and that's why the bitrate really, really struggles to keep up. And when I say struggles, that just means that there's lots of little compression artifacts that happen because you are not saving enough of the changes in the video to have a nice output. All right, I think I have rambled on enough. This is going to keep rendering. And then after this is done rendering, I literally just click upload to YouTube and hopefully you have a nice, uh, crisp Beat Saber output video on your channel. So thanks very much for watching. I, if this did help you, I've heard the like and subscribe buttons work very well. If you feel like clicking any of those in the description of the video, I always have a link to my Discord server if you wanna join that. And I just want to say thank you so much for sticking with my channel. For all of you that are tuning in my live streams, I'm always having a lot of fun with those. Um, and for, you know, viewing my, my Beat Saber videos that are basically the same thing over and over again, just different songs. But I, I have a lot of fun making them, so I hope you all are enjoying them. All right, I will definitely see you in the next one. I really don't want to sit here and talk for another two minutes while this renders. So hopefully you'll have a good day and I'll see you on the next video.